evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Aomori Prefecture in Japan. Which is kind of hard to see on this map because Japan is a long country and many islands. But Aomori is located at the northernmost tip of the largest island, Honshu, which is like the most populous island in Japan. It's where Tokyo is in our regard, so it's a very important island, of course. Now Mori, like I said, is up in the north and here it gets quite cold and mountainous of really incredible forests and streams and mountains and of course the coastline because it's located at the top it has a coast here on the sea of japan or east sea depending on where you are in the world the pacific ocean here and then this is the sugaru strait that separates honshu from um, Hokkaido up here, this big northern island. And look how interesting these peninsulas are shaped. Isn't that something? This is Shimokita Peninsula here. It looks like a big axe. And here is where we're going to see the northernmost point of Hanshu. We'll look at it on Google. The largest city, of course, is Aomori, located right here. Along here, oh, sorry for my tummy. Along here are the Hakoda Mountains, which we're going to talk about in its history. But there's lots of other forests and mountains here. Also, lots of beautiful uh, farms. Mainly apples. This is where the majority of Japan's apples grow. But let me actually move you down a bit so I can show you the UNESCO sites in this area. There are two. One was just added recently. and It's the one I'm most excited about. But we're going to head over here. This forest here, which also goes into Akita. I think I talked about this site when I covered Akita. I don't remember, but it's a forest that's like here. Let's read about it. It is the Shirakami Sanchi. It says it's situated in the mountains of northern Honshu. This trackless site includes the last virgin remains of the cool, temperate forest of Seabold's beech trees that once covered the hills and mountain slopes of northern Japan. The black bear, the zero, and 87 species of birds can be found in this forest. I'm pretty sure I did already talk about this when I covered Akito, because it's very, very beautiful. One of those forests that looks so different from spring and summer, when it's all green and bursting with life, and then in fall it's all orange and leafy. And of course, in winter, it's all snow-capped. Really beautiful. But the one I'm very excited about are the Jomon sites. Um, most of them are in Aomori. Some are up along the southern Hokkaido coast. But um, the more famous sites are in Aomori. So let's talk about it. I think there's a map here. Yeah, perfect. You can see Aomori. property consists of 17 archaeological sites in the southern part of Hokkaido Island and northern Tohoku in geographical settings, ranging from mountains and hills to plains and lowlands, from inland bays to lakes and rivers. They bear a unique testimony to the development over some 10,000 years of the pre-agricultural yet sedentary Jomon culture and its complex spiritual belief system and rituals. It attests to the emergence, development, 
maturity and adaptability to environmental changes of a sedent sedentary hunter-fisher gatherer society which developed from about 13,000 BCE. Expressions of Jomon spirituality were given tangible form and objects such as lacquered pots, clay tablets with the impression of feet, the famous goggle-eyed dogu figurines, as well as in ritual places including earthworks and large stone circles reaching diameters of more than 50 meters. The serial property testifies to the rare and very early development pre-agricultural sedentism from emergence to maturity. Now the most iconic part, I think, of Jomon artifacts, besides the pottery, which is where the word Jomon comes from, is their style of pottery, are the doku. I don't remember if there's pictures here. You can see some little sites there being dug. An old village there. There's some their very famous pottery jugs. Little guys there. Lots of stones. Let's see if there's any doku in this slide. Show there's a body in there buried. Little stones. Nope. But this site's really famous. This little town that they've built with this big tower, just as it was back in the late stages of Jomon culture. So I'll show you the dogu uh, when we look at this site in Google Earth. The best site I found, the most famous dogu was found in um, Tsukaru in Omori. So we'll check that out. Let's head back to the map so we can talk about the history of Omori. Starting, of course, with the Jomon peoples who first lived here around 15,000 years ago and established various towns along the coast. Like it said, they were a hunter-fisher-gatherer people, and many fishing communities and cultures developed along the coastline, which is how the city of Aomari got its start, around 3900 BCE. But the original site was abandoned and then re-established. But the first real prominent indigenous culture we know that settled here were the Emishi people, which were probably related to the Ainu people, who also lived in this region. But the Emishi were the very dominant ones, very big fishing society. They would eventually be absorbed by Kyoto by the year 1094. Kyoto being, of course, where Japan's emperor resided, so essentially becoming absorbed by what we now consider to be Japan by that time. A warlord by the name of Minamoto no Yoritomo would have conquered this area by the year 1189, and that's very important because he would go on to establish the shogunate era of Japan when the emperor would be replaced by the warring ruling class that were defended by the samurai, the local warlords. And this is the part of history that I'm going to kind of skip over a bit, just like how I did Antrim in Northern Ireland a few days ago. I'm going to skip over talking about the various clans that ruled this area. If you know your Japanese history, the, the shoguns were multiple and many. There are many, many different warlords and territories here in Japan, and they all splintered and broke into many conflicts during the Sengoku Jidai, the Warring States period. So I'm not going to go into details about who was in charge where, when they fought, etc., etc. The main clans were known as the Ando and the Nambu. The Nambu becoming 
the more dominant one. Eventually the Sugara would splinter off and also become a very dominant clan that the Nabu fought. And that's all you really need to know for the cliff notes of history at that time before Japan was unified by the Tokugawa shogunate. That's all you really need to know. There's way more details. We don't need to be here for three hours while I discuss uh, northern Japan tribal history. Let's be real. Let's get to the Meiji Restoration, which was the time period when Japan realized that they were part of the world stage and they were considered very backwards by modern standards, so they revamped everything and modernized as much as possible, almost too fast. But Aomori Prefecture would be established in 1871 and become a very modern and industrial up here in the north. Lots of expansion of the cities and towns here. And in this time period, there was a very sad event that happened in the Hakuda Mountains in 1902. The Hakuda Mountains incident, which was the, I think it's to date, the deadliest mountaineering incident ever in history. So Japan, of course, modernizing everything that includes their military, were kind of having a bit of a tussle with Russia. So they thought we need to prepare our warriors for cold weather. So they did a cold weather exercise here in Aomori, uh, traversing the mountains here in the winter. So while a big troop of a hundred something soldiers uh, were marching over the mountains, a blizzard hit. They were lost for days and I think it was some 190 soldiers lost their lives at that time. Very, very sad. Totally unnecessary as well. Isn't that so tragic? There's memorials and things commemorating that event, and I think Japan has made movies and things like that, commemorating the tragedy. Skipping ahead to World War II, uh, every major city in Japan, save for three, were bombed before the atom bombs were dropped. So Aomori was no exception. It was bombed on the night of March 23rd, 1945. And 80% of the city was destroyed. So obviously it's been rebuilt since then and much more modernized. I would say probably Aomori is most famous for, well, it's its mountains, its apples, and for the uh, Nebuta Matsuri, the Nebuta festival they hold in August. Um, Japan's one of those countries that every region has like a huge festival of some sort. The Nebuta Matsuri is a parade of these huge paper lantern floats that depict brave warriors and such. It's really, really cool. So I am going to switch into Google Earth mode and show you some of those floats and some of the sights around Almori and of course the Doku. You've got to see if you've never seen one before. I was at the gym the other day, like two or three weeks ago, and Ancient Aliens was playing on one of the TVs and they were showing the Doku and I'm like, I know those. <laughs> Trying to say that they're alien-like. And of course they're not. But, you know, there is something very unearthly about them. So let's go take a look. No more talking. Let's go look. So here is Elmori Prefecture. Let's zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. If you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, I'll show you all that. There's Japan. That's the big island here. And Japan is, of course, off of the Asian continent. China, Korea, Russia. There's the Pacific Ocean, down there's the Philippines, there's Japan, there's Elmori up here at the top. So let's start off by looking at Elmori, there's the big, big city here. I'm going to show you, 
See, there's the Hatoka Memorial ship. I told you there's memorials all over. It's down here. Nebuta Museum. Muse uh, Nebuta Museum. <laughs> Nebuta Festival Museum. Really cool exterior design, first of all. And here's what some of these floats look like. This one's kind of hard to see because it's so far away. You can see a warrior right there in the midst of a fierce battle. There he is, looking very strong. And there's his princess, admiring him. This is a good one. So yeah, this is all lanterns. This is all paper lanterns, and they parade down the streets, all lit up. Look at these fierce guys here. They're ready to brawl. I did read much about the history of this festival. I don't know why they depict the warriors. There's the big bridge and everything. Oh, the rays of the sun shining down here around this one. But it's still very cool. There's a little history of the parade here showing past floats. Very, very cool. Look at that. Oh, that one's neat. Looks like they're threatened. So cool, right? You can kind of see the, the paper details there. It's all paper lanterns. There is, of course, so many cool things to see in Aomori. We could spend all day there. You could see some Jomon stuff there. But I really want to show you the the cool Jomon stuff for, oops, I dropped a pen, of course, in Tsukaru. Is the famous Jomon exhibition where the most famous Doku statue is located. So you can see some examples of the Jomon pottery. Again, you can see the style there. Jomon is the Japanese word for the style of pottery. Of course, we don't know what they're called. And here he is. The very famous Doku. What's left of him at least? Big old buggy eyes. Squat little body. If you play Animal Crossing, you recognize this guy. It's crazy red right? will sell it to you. And you can see there he is displayed outside the museum. It's an example of what their homes would have looked like. And cooking around the campfire there, collected some nuts, caught some little fish there, and other little doku guys. These ones kind of remind me of a uh, Zelda. Um, oh, what were they called? The little leaf guys. I can't remember what they're called right now. I'm in uh, Japan history mode right now, not video game nerd mode. Oh, I also forgot to mention something, but we'll talk about it after this museum. Uh, some more little figurines. Very Breath of the Wild. A piece of pottery that's been put together. Little arrowheads by the looks of that. How cool is it? Look at that. Oops. Like, you can see why the ancient aliens people were like, what's going on here? Because this looks unreal. Sorry if you can hear the siren outside. Yeah, there's the big, big watchtowers that I assume that they built. I don't, maybe they're greeneries, but it looks like a, a watchtower to me. There he is looking out among the museum, remembering past glory days of whatever it was he was used for. So I forgot to mention, because um, I promised I would mention, my brother-in-law is really into competitive street fighter, and apparently one of the best street fighter competitors in history is from Aomori. His name's Daigo. He got all excited when I told him that I was talking about Daigo's hometown. He showed me all of his highlight clips and stuff, and he was a very impressive street fighter player. But also, I think, even more importantly, the pen pineapple apple pen guys from Aomori. <laughs> yes, that guy. I know. Th uh, probably one of the most important people culturally <laughs> ever. Let's check out the mountains here while we're over in this corner. Here's Mount Hakoda. Hakoda-san. There's a little shrine here, and this is not litter, this is drinks that have been left to appease someone or something, maybe a 
those people who lost their lives up in these gorgeous mountains. It's very, very beautiful in the springtime. You can see the autumn is approaching here. Land markers. Oh, look how beautiful it is in autumn. Oh, look at those gorgeous colors. And of course, in winter, it's very snowy. I should mention I've been practicing my Japanese on Duolingo lately. If I'll remember, I'll leave my uh, username down in the description box if you want to play Duolingo with me, if you're on your own language learning journey. I only picked it up like two months ago. Look how pretty. It's a really pretty little lodge up here in the mountains. the, uh, wait, there we go. Mount Iwaki is also really interesting, because look at how this guy just rises up. Definitely a volcanic mountain, right? Let's look at that slideshow. Look how pretty. Ooh, look at the top of the mountain here. You can ring a little bell when you reach it. There's the view. Get the shrine there at the top. It's very, very lovely, but I really want to show you like the, oh, wow, it's a cool picture. The forests here, like the, uh, let's just find the UNESCO forest down here. The slideshow has to pop up. Oh, so many. Let's look at Kuokuma Waterfall, Black Bear Waterfall. So pretty. Oh, so peaceful. All kinds of mountain hikes are up here. Like, this is the place you go for um, enjoying the beautiful woods and the peaceful water. Look at all the rocks it's bouncing off of. And all the lovely trees and things. You could just get lost here in the best way. There is something, of course, very haunted about these kinds of woods. Like, Princess Mononoke is going to find you here or something if you let her. <laughs> but uh, it's so peaceful and beautiful. Okay, I want to show you something cool that I found when I was exploring around Tsugaru. I went up here to the coast, and I found, I think it's over here, yes, I went, oh, an Inari shrine, let's check it out, and then I saw this, and I went, what in the world is that? What is that? And so, I'm the wrong way, I looked, and there's like a really good slideshow I want to show you, now what is this one? It is a row of Tori Gates. <laughs> Look at Oh my goodness. That's way too many Tori Gates. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I just want to run through it. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the shrine. The entrance there. The actual Tori Gate leading to the shrine. I just want to run through it really fast. So cool, right? Beautiful scenery from above. Even the map is showing you like it looks it's so weird from above, but then when you're in it, it's so, so neat. Pretty little ponds there full of lilies. And you can see the winding, winding tori gates. Tori means bird because the birds would sit on top of like the neatest thing I found in this whole prefecture, to be honest. But we're going to close out this video with a look up here at 
the northernmost point of the island, Cape Oma. Okay, you can punch a tuna. <laughs> See, he's fighting back against that big tuna. And surely that's a sign saying you're at the northernmost point of Honshu. Sorry if you can hear all the sirens outside. I hope it's not picking up too loud. But um, lots of little inscriptions here. I can't really read kanji, so I can't tell you what they say. But yes, at the northernmost point of the island above that is a whole other island. There is a big old rail bridge that can take you to the island, but there's ferries as well. Yep, you can stay at the very, very northernmost point of the largest island. So many tuna. It's definitely like the symbol of the region. Maybe that's what uma means. I'm not sure. I don't know the word for tuna. But yeah, how cool is that? Little map of the park. Like I said, all of these have like 20 picture slideshows. Let's look at uh, Saimura Forest Park. We'll end it there. There's no pictures. There. Okay. Well, most places have like 20 picture slideshows. Let's see. Yukiko Park. Oh, sorry. Yuko. Yuko? Yukiko or Yuko? It's only three pictures. Yuko Park. Okay, well, almost every place here has <laughs> slide shows to see. Where should we end this, then? Here in the lake? Like Okaiwara. Is there a slideshow for the lake? Bodies of water usually weirdly don't have them. <laughs> no, but let's just go randomly here. Surely this has pictures. Oh my gosh, how beautiful. Okay, so we'll end it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. We're going to Italy next. I mean, you don't want to miss Italy, right? So be sure you subscribe. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a